Hello and welcome back to Bits and Bobs. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about coin terminology and the terminology we use in videos. So without further ado, let's have a look and let's see some of the coin terminology that we use. So I'm just starting from any random order. So first we're looking at obverse and reverse. They come in a double whammy, so two as one. So we all know a coin has a head. So you've got your two pound coin over here with Queen Elizabeth II. And then another design on the other, the other side. But what side is what? So everyone knows when you flip a coin, you go heads or tails. And this is exactly what it is. So heads is the obverse. So obviously it's the heads. That's how uh, we at Bits of Bobs remember it. Um, so we think heads or tails, what one is it? Obviously it's the heads. And then tails is the reverse. Reverse is behind you. Tails is gonna be behind you on animals. So reverse is the back. So it's tails and obverse is the heads because it's obviously the heads. So next we've got sterling silver. You're gonna hear this in most of our videos, especially the ones about our personal coins. We like sterling silver at bits and bobs, but what does it actually mean? So when we say sterling silver, we'll more than likely be saying sterling silver or 925 silver. So 925 is the percentage. Uh, so it's 92.5% pure silver. And then what's left? 7.5%. So 7.5 of 100. Uh, so 7.5% of 100 is the rest of the non-silver. So it could be copper, it could be any other metal really. And this just makes sure that silver is stronger. As we all know, silver is a strong, uh, it's quite a weak metal, but it's stronger than gold. So it needs to be um, put in place by a stronger metal. So just 7.5% um, of that small weight. So we know small three pences, we know how small they are. 92.5% um, 90, of that is pure silver. And then the rest uh, is another metal. And this is just sterling silver. So then we have pre-decimal and decimal. What does this mean? So currently in the UK, we use decimal system. So there's a hundred pennies in a pound. One pound is a hundred pennies and so on. So if you want half a pound, you get 50 pence and so on and so forth. So pre-decimal was before this. This is when we had farthings, groats, uh, pennies as well. It's where there was 240 pennies to a pound. Then we have hold. Now this can be done for quite a few reasons. You get some hold uh, to have around a chain, but what is hold first of all? It's, well, a coin, you've got your bog standard coin, and then it's punched with a hole. So it's got a little uh, circular disc, a very small one, uh, missing out of it. You'll see quite a few of our coins uh, have got these sadly. It's annoying, especially in the coin community, if you're collecting coins, but it's all right in the end. So some people do it to have it as a jewellery piece, uh, piece around their neck, have coin. You might see like a sovereign or, or something like that. Sixpence, threepence, something around their neck. Another reason this could be was the Great Recoinage Act. So this basically meant these coins are, when you're not allowed to use them anymore. They're not, um, they're not legal tender anymore. And this was an easy way to make sure that they would not be used having a hole in them. Then we've got hammered coins. Hammered coins is quite a simple one. Hammered coins was just a very, very old type of coin. We've got quite a few hammered coins at bits and bobs, but it's just coins hit with a hammer rather than done with a massive hydraulic press or, you know, it's, it's less mechanized. It's just some someone just whacking a blank piece of silver or gold with a hammer with a print on it. The next two are involved with hammered coins. So you've got clipped and shaving. This was two techniques for people to get silver from the coins. So they would shave or clip from the coins, just around the edges and then melt it down. And if they kept doing it, eventually they would get more and more silver, which would be worth money, obviously. And then people would make money off that because they'd get basically free silver because if they shaved a small bit every day off a penny or farthing then eventually they get more money and then this does uh, obviously translate into other coins so you've got a long cross penny this was uh, one of the first ways they tried to stop clipping and shaving 
as if it wasn't a full penny, the cross wasn't going all the way, or you thought that looks a bit off, you can see the coin had been clipped possibly or shaved, and that just means that it wasn't right. So onto silver again, we've got rainbow toning. So we obviously know as coins get older, they tone, so some get darker, some um, just get less and worse quality. Some people prefer to have coins uh, rainbow toning. Now this has been mentioned once or twice, I do believe, in the Bits and Bobs channel, uh, where we've got a coin and it sheens just like a rainbow, so a few different colours. There there's an example of rainbow toning. Um, this is uh, desirable for some people. Personally, I'm not a massive fan of it, but it's quite a nice thing to have. I think, I, I mean, I've got one uh, rainbow toned coin, but it's just a, a thing that people like, and yeah. And then the last one I've got on my list is script. So the script or the lettering is just what's written around uh, the coin. This is a prime example of uh, one thing that we do in our videos for once a month for Monarch of the Month. Uh, we tell the script is this, and then we translate it into English. The script is usually in Latin. Um, yeah, it's usually in Latin because, and that's the uh, language that was just used in coinage. Well, there we are. Uh, that's all the coin terminology I've got. If you've got any questions or any other coin terminology that I've missed, please do comment down below. Uh, otherwise, please do share, like, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. See you later on Bits and Bobs.